Guys, I hope you're well. You've got Mr. Everything English and today we are going to break down Act 1 of Macbeth. Now, I've got another video where I break down the entire play, but I'm doing this series of five videos where I break down Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, Act 5 and every single scene within that act. So guys, without further ado, click subscribe and let's begin. So, Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 1, we meet the witches and the scene is set. There's thunder, there's lightning, there's rain, there's pathetic fallacy. But the mood is very dark, the mood is very cold and we meet our three witches. And the witches, guys, they say one key important thing. They talk about how the next time they meet is when the battle is lost or won. And this is them discussing how they will meet Macbeth at a later part in our text. And that is literally the only thing that happens in the first scene. In the first scene, we meet the witches and the witches discuss their plans for the future. And we, we learn about their characters. We learn they're quite evil, they're quite dark, they're quite nasty. And this is where the scene ends. And then we move on to Act 2. So Act 2? We move on to Act 1, Scene 2. Guys, Act 1, Scene 2, this is when we learn about the battle when the King of Scotland, Duncan, is fighting the Norwegians. There's a war going on. And in the war, we have two captains, and we learn that the name of our captains is Macbeth and Banquo. And the first thing we learn about Macbeth is that he is brave, Macbeth. And we learn how he's fighting on the battlefield. It talks about how he unseamed the enemy from the nave to the chaps, meaning from the belly button to the chin, he chopped the enemy open. Now, why is this important? Because we learn about the character of Macbeth. He is a fantastic soldier who fights wholeheartedly for his king, his country and his people. He is not a bad person. And then we learn also about the character of Banquo, who also fought alongside Macbeth. But from the very early on in the play, guys, Banquo is in the shadows of Macbeth. Now, a very important thing, guys, in this scene, Act 1, Scene 2, we also learn that the king was betrayed by the Thane of Cordor. Now, the Thane of Cordor is basically like a, like a lord. He's somebody in charge of a particular area. And he betrayed the king, the Thane of Cordor. And because he betrayed the king, the battle became a little bit close, 50-50. But Macbeth and Banco, they fought. Um, they fought well. They fought strongly. And Macbeth and Banco were able to be victorious. Then we move on to Act 1, Scene 3. And Macbeth and Banco are walking, they're traveling um, from the battle after having won the battle. And this is where Macbeth and Banco meet three beautiful women. And they can't get their eyes off of them. I'm joking, they're not beautiful, but it is true. They can't get their eyes off of them. Macbeth and Banco, guys, they meet the witches and Banco literally insults them. He says that they've got beards. He says their clothes are ugly. He literally insults them to their face. The witches don't really pay attention to Banco. They focus on Macbeth. And they say to Macbeth that Macbeth, you will be Thane of Glamis, which he currently is. He is currently the Thane of Gal Glamis. Then they say, you will be Thane of Cordor. And then they say that you will be king hereafter. Now for Macbeth to be told that he will be king is complete and absolute absurdity. Macbeth is not in the line of kings. King Duncan has two sons who are next in line. Macbeth is nowhere in that conversation. But the important thing is guys, when they say this to Macbeth, he becomes wrapped, he becomes focused, he becomes mesmerized by the witches. Now, what do we learn here? We learn that deep down inside, Macbeth has ambition for power. Macbeth is hungry for more. Now, now guys, in this act, guys, in this act, um, just as the witches make the prophecy that Macbeth will be Thane of Cordor, um, in comes two other characters, guys. In comes Ross and Angus, and they tell Macbeth, they tell Macbeth that the king has decided that you are now Thane of Cordor. They almost give him a promotion. Now, why is that important? The witches predict that Macbeth will be Thane of Cordor. Within a couple of lines, Macbeth is told that he is now Thane of Cordor. Guys, this makes the witches sound as they as though they know what they are talking about. They are 100% legit. It's like me saying, in five seconds, this picture will fall off the wall, and it does. 
Yeah, it gives me a little bit more importance. It makes what I say a little bit more important. And guys, that is what happens at that part in the play. Macbeth, by the end of Act 1, Scene 3, guys, Macbeth is indeed Thane of Cordor. And we then move on, guys, to Act 1, Scene 4. And this is where the king meets Macbeth and Banquo and he compliments these characters and he says very good things about them. But what's very important here, guys, is we also learn here that Macbeth, he finally lets out that he has dark and deep desires. There's something inside him, something growing inside him that is making him want to do more. Now, I'm going to pause there for one second. Act one, we meet the witches. Sorry, scene one, we meet the witches. Scene two, we meet Macbeth, brave, brave, brave Macbeth, fighting for his king and his country. Scene three, Macbeth meets the witches and is told the prophecies. And then he becomes Thane of Cordor. Scene four, he meets the king who compliments him and Macbeth shows signs that he indeed wants to be king. He indeed wants ambition. He indeed wants power. And then guys, we meet the babe of the play. We meet the chick magnet. Actually no, chick magnet is the wrong word. We meet the babe of the play. We meet Lady Macbeth. Now, what can I say about Lady Macbeth? We meet her reading a letter. Now, this letter is from Macbeth. Macbeth has written her letter to tell her everything about what's been happening. Listen, I met the witches. The witches told me I'll be Thane of Cordor. I'll be king. Because of that, I will be great. Because of me being great, you will be great. And she gets on a complete boost. She starts saying, unsex me here, I take my milk, make me more of a, make me less of a woman, make me less feminine, basically make me more like the witches because she believes that will give her power, that will make her ruthless because she understands what needs to be done for them to be powerful, which is what she understands that the king must be killed. Now, all that happens, guys, and she's in a boost, Macbeth comes home and tells her, that the king is coming to the castle and this completely um, gets her going because now she realizes hold on if we're going to kill the king if i'm going to plan the dead the killing he's coming to our castle i can do it right now act one scene six guys six sick act one scene six guys the king arrives um, and this is a very short um, scene i'm not going to dwell upon it too much the king arrives and the irony is how Lady Macbeth treats him. She is a two-faced monster. She is so nice, so courteous, so kind to him, but inside she's plotting his death. And finally, guys, we turn to act one, scene seven. So much has happened in just the first act of the play. But let's end it, guys. Act one, scene seven. Macbeth begins the play debating whether or not he should go and kill Duncan. Um, debating or not, debating whether or not he should do the deed but that's irrelevant because lady macbeth decides for him at this time in the play guys lady macbeth she almost insults him she mocks him she calls him a coward she says all these things to get him riled up she says you're not a man prove to me you're a man and because of the, because of this guys macbeth becomes completely uh, put, uh, uh, almost overwhelmed he doesn't want to kill the king almost because he wants to kill the king. He wants to kill the king because he wants to prove to his wife that whatever she's saying about him is incorrect. That doesn't mean Macbeth doesn't have ambition for power. But at this point in the play, he was like this on whether he should kill Duncan or not. By the end of Act 1, Scene 7, she's fully convinced him. And that is the end of the first act of Macbeth. So guys, in a nutshell, what happened in the first act of Macbeth? We meet the witches. We then meet Macbeth and we learn how good and brave and powerful he is in the good and right way. Then we meet the witches who give him the prophecies and tell him he'll be Cordor and he'll be king one day. Macbeth straight away is given the title of Thane of Cordor. This makes the witches' prophecies sound even more true, even more real. He then shows us signs that he has deep, deep and dark desires of doing bad things to become king. Then he tells Lady Macbeth about the prophecies and she gets on an even more robust. Then the king comes to their house and then Lady Macbeth persuades Macbeth to kill Duncan. And that is where the act ends. Duncan is not dead yet. That is later in act two. I will end the video here, guys. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and keep an eye out for the summary of act two. Peace.